Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the English summary, a just in a translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Qamaru Zaman Sahib Dhamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Sunday, the 5th of Muharram, 1443, corresponding with the English date, 15th of August, 2021. This Majlis took place after the Ishraq Salat at the residence of Hazrat Wala Dhamad Barakatuhum, Baitul Azkar. Hazrat Wala Dhamad Barakatuhum quotes the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Al-Khaya wa Shu'batum min al-Iman Hazrat Wala Dhamad Barakatuhum thereafter goes on to say that this morning this thought came to me that I should read from the kitab Akhlaq is Salaf as well and continue with it so a considerable amount could be covered and the essence or the original kitab is Tambihul Mughtarreen those people that have been deceived it will be a wake-up call for them a warning or to get them out of their slumber and their sleep this kitab is that of Allah Masharani Rahimahullah Hazrat Muran Muhammad Ahmad Saab I mean the Urdu Tarjuma was there he said that we should uh, make a talkhis a summary and just of it and for many long days, I did not read from this kitab, rather, rather I even forgot about it. And thereafter, my gaze fell on it, so now we are going through it. Hazrat Murat Tanwi Rahimahullah used to say regarding Hazrat Shah Waliullah and Allah Masharani that those, these two great personalities are of such a rank and status that knowledge is raining down upon them. You know, actually, like how the dry leaves of a tree fall in winter and autumn. They just fall and it just keeps on coming down and down and down. Uloom and Ma'arif comes from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them just like that. Al-Yawaqeet, Wal-Jawahir, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic kitab. When I went to Makkah Mukarrama, I said, where would I get these kitabs, etc. But Alhamdulillah, I found this kitab. Also the futuhat e which is written in seven volumes. And then after that, the author says that I looked at one one volume to condense and collect them into one one chapter. This is a miracle of minds. And I have confidence in it myself. Hazrat Qari Tayyib Sahib Ta'ala used to say, on the one side we have Ibn Taymiyyah, and on the other side we have uh, Allama Sharani, and the Deobandi Maslak is the middle path of both. Dono ka mu'tadil. Hazrat Shah Wasiullah Sahib Rahimahullah, these kitabs were his orna bichona. His every day, it was on his desk in front of him and he was taking benefit from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the fuyuz and the barakat of these kitabs. Hazrat Anwi rahimahullah ta'ala's kitab At-Tambih wa Tarbih fi Tarjih ibn Arabi and from there Al-Yawaqeet wal-Jawahir was written. Murrah Ahmad Razakha used to say that Ashraf Ali has a fantastic uh, excellence and uh, what can you say something in him uh, he is actually gifted you know he has a dung that uh, some type of way that when it comes to kitabs a uh, naming of kitabs nobody can beat him he is wonderful and excellent at that Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and the hidayat of taking benefit from these kitabs, rather creating thirst in, uh, for us in these kitabs. Most definitely so much is mentioned in these kitabs. Now we continue. We read from the Tambihul Muhtarreen. From among the akhlaq of the Salafus Salihin is that when they kept Siyam and Rosa, when they carried out Hajj, they would be more concerned of it. They would attach more importance to it than they even did regarding other A'mal. Because Rosa would come just once every year, the Rosa of Ramadan. 
and the Hajj would come once in a lifetime. So they used to carry it out with such care, such etiquette and so much of importance was attached to it because they would stay mahfuz and protected from one year to another year. When they would keep that Ramadan fast in such a unique manner, Allah Ta'ala would keep them protected from shaitan for the entire year. Now, at, last, at least let us make this niyat now, that we would keep our Ramadan Roza in the best manner and we would carry out Hajj in that way. You know, Hazrat Mawlana Abrarul Haq used to say, you know, I mean, people go for Hajj and then they go and they make gusht. They go and make Hajj, they stroll around and they wander around in the bazaars and in the marketplaces. But they have gone there for Hajj. Manan Abraul Haq used to say that many people, their Hajj is only limited until Jidda. Some of them until Bombay, meaning all the effects and nur of it is already lost before they even reach home. By the time they reach home, there is no atharat of the Hajj even left. Now these are the type of points that Hazrat Mawlana Abraul Haq used to make us aware of. Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to go out and he used to go to the civil lines, he used to catch a rickshaw and he would leave. But it was not to go and see this and go and do that and this and the other. Rather it was for his tilawat of Quran. He was the, a master Hafizul Quran. Unique Hafizul Quran. He knew the Quran in and out. He would recite entire manzil, five, six, seven Jews a day. That was his mamul. And of course, in Ramadan, the entire Quran was recited uh, every day. I mean, he would say, he would say, I mean, he wouldn't tell everybody this. We were with him all the time. He mentioned to me that when I'm reading Salat, the scafiat is with me that I'm right in front of al kaaba Allahu Akbar. So we're speaking about the Siyam and the Hajj, how it would protect a person from one year to another year. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, La ilaha illallah is the fortress, is our fortress. It protects us. A Sahabi comes and he reads Salat. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, Salli fa inna kalam tu salli. Perform your Salat again because you have not performed your Salat. Now, will these type of talks just be confined to the platform and to the desk of the classrooms? Should it not be brought out into the open? Most definitely it should be. Look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this particular situation and condition, how he corrects the Sahabi, Amr bil Maruf, and how he teaches him about the importance of khushu and khudu in Salat and how to perform a perfect Salat with ta'deel arkan. That when moving from posture to posture, the entire body comes to a complete dead stop where nothing is moving before you can carry on to the next posture. Allahu Akbar. So when we perform the Salat and we keep the fast in this way, then it would be something that would bring Barakat about. That would bring some Barakat. There was a person by Abdul Shakur and he started coming to the Majlis of Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib and then started keeping his rozas and performing Salat etc. After that he reached a stage where he started performing such an enviable Salat with so much of khuzu, so much of khushur in such a beautiful manner. You know, on one occasion one of his friends went to visit him and he asked that listen where is he? They said no he's gone to read Salat. So this friend of his then made a terrible remark and comment and he says, what is he going to achieve from uh, his Salat? I have been reading Salat all these years and I have achieved nothing. Dr. Salahuddin brought this here actually and he told this to Hazrat, due to which after that Hazrat remarked so much on this particular incident and people who make such remarks. Such remarks. You know these people, uh, they say they want uh, a good wife and a wonderful place to stay 
and uh, a lovely conveyance and a car. But a mu'min is such. I mean, he lives in this dunya. These things are in his mind. But he's over and above that completely. He's got Jannah in front of him and he continues and he progresses. Nevertheless, Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib says, he didn't find anything in Salat, but we found so much in Salat. Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahimahullah found so much in Salat. And then he would go on to quote this particular incident uh, which took place. I mean, you know, you have the dungeons, you have the jails and these dark cells in this jail. And then you have these officers and wardens who uh, are on duty in the jails and in these dungeons. And then they come up, they have this card and they go to the particular cell and then they take out the criminal and he needs to come and stand in front of the court because it is his time for his court case, etc. Nevertheless, on one occasion, this particular warden and officer, he took this particular criminal out and then he told him, just sit here for a while. And then he started reading his Salat. But in all of that, when he completed his Salat, this criminal ran away. He taught it to be an opportune moment or the golden opportunity for him to escape. But whichever gate he went to and he reached, he became blind. He became blind. He could not see. Nevertheless, the officer finished his Salat. He looked this way. He looked that way. He couldn't find him. He said, okay, listen, it was in my Salat that he left. Let me read another Salat. Let me perform another few rakats and he would come back. And this is exactly what he done. And then the, 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 the prisoner, the criminal presents himself and comes and sits back at the very same place. He completes his Salat. He engages in dialogue with the prisoner and he says, what happened? Where did you go? And he relates then the story to him that wherever I ran out to, I became blind. And this particular incident became so famous, it became the talk of town. And the other officers, high ranking officers above him actually then understood his state and his condition and they said to him, listen, you would be paid in full, but all your duties are maaf. It is because of you that there's so much of afiyat and salamati and all of this year. So you continue with your salat, you do this and that and the other, you are excused from your duty and you would be paid in full. Now this was the benefit of salat. And look at the amazing things that happened through Salat. There was this lady who was an inspector. She writes a letter to Hazrat Tanwi Rahimahullah Ta'ala says, saying that I tell my husband to read Salat. And he says to me in reply uh, that what will I get from Salat? So Hazrat Tanwi Rahimahullah Ta'ala writes to her and says that listen, when your husband says that, say to him that I, I got Salat from Salat. He says that what will you receive from Salat? Meaning, I've got Salat from Salat. There's nothing more to say to such people. Telling him from the Salat, I've achieved Salat. I've got Salat from Salat. Allahu Akbar. Namaz, bohat bari ni'mat, bohat bari dalat, bohat bari cheese. Namaz and Salat is something great. It is a great wealth. <coughs> anyway, Alama Sharani Rahimahullah is saying, or a person after he goes uh, for Hajj, I mean his Hajj, after his Hajj, whoever reads his Juma Salat with complete uh, sincerity and the way it should be read, then he would be protected until the next Friday. And similarly, whichever person reads his Salat in the most proper manner, then he would be protected from one Salat to another Salat. From all of this year, we understand the great secrets of the Shariat, the Asrar. We are coming to know about that. That Salat, which is in coordinance with the Sunnah, it is Muafiq of the Shariat, then you would find great benefits in it. But not just a namaz that is read uh, in a customary uh, manner. There was the Khalifa of Hazrat Tanwi Rahimahullah, Haji Rafiuddin. And uh, his peer by, his colleague was Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib. He would go on telling people, if any one of you wants to see a Salat, a Salat of Khushu and Khuzu, then go and see the Salat of Mawlim Wasiullah, Allahu Akbar. And he was his colleague, not even his teacher or sheikh, Allahu Akbar. 
people came to Maulana Khalil Ahmad Sahib and said to him, Hazrat, you read such a wonderful Salat. He said, Acha, is that so? You know what, you haven't seen the Salat of Maulana Rashid Ahmad. Go to him and see his Salat. And it is written and we hear and we learn from the kitabs regarding the Salat of Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. It was Ashbah. It was the closest to the Salat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From this we also learn that already in that time people were seeing that whose Salat is the most correct, which is the highest, which is the closest to that of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fuzail ibn Ayaz rahimahullah ta'ala says, that we've seen such people that saved their rosas even from laughter. They would not even laugh in that state of rosa. And then he would say that this is the month of doing good deeds where one competes with another. It is not the month of negligence and laughter. Allahu Akbar. Fuzail ibn Ayaz rahimahullah ta'ala says, That person who keeps all, who, that person who does not save all his limbs from Rosa, uh, sorry, that person who does not save all his limbs from sin, then that person, even though he's hungry, he can never ever be fasting, uh, denoting the spiritual fast. And that person, whose organs and his limbs and every part of his body which is safe from sin is not involved in sin. In reality, that person is a fasting person. Fuzail ibn Ayaz. Now look at the name of the personality. It's coming over and over and over again. He was the leader of uh, the thieves. And look at that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him the leader of the awliya. Buzurgo ke sardar ho gaye. He says that Sufyan Ithauri rahimahullah ta'ala went uh, walking for Hajj uh, from Basra. Somebody asked that uh, does he not have a conveyance uh, that he could mount etc. So he answered that the runaway slave, will he ever go and present himself to uh, Allah? Uh, in a way on a conveyance or this or that or the other or would he roam the earth the runaway slave the sinful servant on a conveyance or would he be on foot Allahu Akbar I heard Hazrat Ali al Kawas rahimahullah ta'ala saying that I have seen such people that had gone out uh, for Hajj but they did not even have the carriage mounted upon uh, the camel and they would say that for a person who is in Ihram what is his state supposed to be? His hair supposed to be disheveled? His clothes and his Ihram supposed to be dusty? How can he be going around looking for shade? That would be against the grain of a person who is in Ihram. If from the uh, uh, from the Salaf al-Salihin, if there was anyone who needed to go for Hajj, then he would stay for many long years, saving up halal rizq and his rosy. He would gather that instead of taking that same money from some wealthy person. From some wealthy person. Okay, from amongst the akhlaq of the Salaf al-Salihin is also that they are very, they have a lot of haya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they even have haya in front of uh, people because it is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he says, Al-haya'u min al-iman. Haya is from iman. Walikulli deenin khuluqan. And every deen has a uh, a great uh, or an important feature, characteristic and akhlaq. Wa khuluqul Islam. And the salient feature 
and character and point in Islam is that of haya, to have sharam and shame and to be bashful. Bishar Hafi rahimahullah ta'ala says, everything has its a beauty and the beauty of haya is to abandon sin. Similarly, everything has an end result and the end result of haya and sharam and shame is good deeds. Malik ibn Dinar rahimahullah ta'ala says that Allah ta'ala has never punished the heart of any person more than snatching away the quality of haya from that particular heart. Allahu Akbar. Yusuf ibn Asbat rahimahullah ta'ala says that we have seen such people that actually felt ashamed of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his pleasure and Jannah. Rather, they would say that, oh Allah, forgive us for our sins. I mean, we do ask Allah subhanahu, this is a hal, a spiritual state, but they would actually feel ashamed of even asking Allah for that, thinking in their minds that we are so sinful. Allah Masharani then writes a remark and a footnote and he says that think about this and compare it to your own hal and your own condition. On one occasion, there was a person who was bathing his young little son and the son was making a, a haya and sharam like, you know, he's hiding and covering his body and this and that. And uh, the father is saying, don't do that. And why are you doing this? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stopped him from that and said that keep this quality in him. It is because of haya, people stay away from many, many uh, sins. You know, some people even come to us in the state of Raza. Not only that, they don't even hide it. They want to come and show us some point or this or that or the, the other. They come in front of us uh, smoking their cigarettes. On one occasion, rather the first time that I went to London, then I spoke about Haya. I spoke about Haya because these people there, their whole foundation is based on Behayai, rather on nudity. They have no sharam whatsoever. And our whole deen and Batini akhlaq and characteristic is this of haya, so important, haya, so integral, so part and parcel of our deen it is. There was a kitab that I was uh, going through, I found it in my library, and uh, the tasawuf, asre jadid me, tasawuf in this modern day and age. I'm also going through that kitab and working on it, trying to uh, compile something from there. Salaf salihin from their akhlaq, is also this that despite having the high levels of taqwa despite having the high levels of taqwa they do not count themselves from those who are muttaqi and pious also they possess the great love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amirul mu'minin umar radiyallahu ta'ala an used to address himself and say, O son of Khattab, fear Allah, otherwise Allah will punish you. And Allah won't even be bothered of you, so fear Allah. And he would say that whoever fears Allah, then he would not fulfill every order of his nafs. He would not carry out every one of his desires. Urwa al-Raqi rahimahullah ta'ala says A person, you can gather his love for Allah by his love for the Quran and his love for good deeds and his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you can gather that from his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sunnats of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's practicing on it. Muhammad ibn Wasi rahimahullah ta'ala says, There are many people who think they have reached excellence in love and muhabbat 
Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with them. O oh friend, Allah Masharani is saying, think about this. Think about what I'm mentioning here. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. From amongst the Salafu Salihin, one salient feature and from amongst the Akhlaq is this. That they turn their attention and they become disinterested. Not interested. They are not interested in the dunya. And they are not searching and in quest of this jun, dun, dunya. Rather, uh, the, and that's actually why that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us in the hadith. إِنَّمَا مَثَلِي وَمَثَلُ الدُّنْيَا كَمَثَلِ رَجْلٍ إِسْتَظَلَّ تَحْتَ شَجَرَةٍ ثُمَّ رَاحَ وَتَرَكَهَا That the example of a, my example and the example of the dunya is uh, such that of a person uh, who has taken shade under a tree and then he stands up and he leaves it and he continues. Sufyan ibn Utbah rahimahullah ta'ala Sufyan ibn Utbah where is it? Rahimahullah ta'ala is saying that this word zuhud za ha dal has three letters abstinence. It has three letters za for zenith. So a person who wants to adopt zuhud, the first thing he'll look at za and he would abandon uh, adornment. And then you come to ha, he would leave uh, the nafs, abandon the nafs. And dal, he would abandon uh, the dunya. So when you have all three of this here, it is only then that you would become a zahid and that you would be abstinent from this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in i'tidal. Hazrat Marana Alimiya, I said this yesterday also when he went to uh, Fatahpur and he heard the talks of Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah sahab, he said, I have never seen such type of moderation. This morning when I woke up, this hadith came to my mind, the hadith of Abu Dawood, that hide away, cover, conceal the faults of a, a prominent person, a person of uh, high standing. Uh, do not disgrace him, you would become disgraced. Do not open up his faults, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose you. This is also from our akhlaq and our character, rather akhlaq and nabawiyah, which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us. In Bukhari Sharif, the hadith comes that a person who is mustakbir and mustahi will never gain ilm. A person who is arrogant and a person who is mustahi, shy. So, Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah sahab used to make kalam on this and he says, an arrogant person will never gain knowledge, but a person who is mustahi, in essence, He's actually not mustahi because you would not make haya at that occasion. At that occasion is a time to get gain ilm. You will ask questions, you'll do this, you'll do the other. In actual fact, he is not mustahi, rather he is mustakbir as well. You know, when I said this in front of uh, uh, the muhaddithin, Mufti Kanpuri and others, uh, they were delighted and they said, did Shah Wasiullah sahab actually make this, this type of kalam when he used to teach hadith? Allahu Akbar. And all of this, it is all about this, that we remove all these abhorrent type of characteristics and akhlaq from our heart, the razail. We remove this from ourselves. On one occasion, Hazrat Tanwi rahimahullah ta'ala in making Islam of one of his disciples tells him that, listen, I want you to write on a page that I am proud and arrogant. I have arrogance in myself. He says, take it and stick that on the wall, stick it on the door. And this person is going, en route, he passes by uh, Mari Zafar Ahmad. And he says, uh, well, what's happening? They start speaking and he says, no, Hazrat, I'm doing it. Hazrat gave me the hukam. He says, what is it? He says, no, I'm writing on the page. I've written on the page and I'm arrogant. I'm just busy. I'm going to put it onto the wall. I'm putting it onto the door. Nevertheless, Hazrat Zafar Ahmad Saab comes to Hazrat Tanvi and this was his uh, real biological chacha, uncle. 
And he says, Abba, he says to him, you told this person that there, but listen, he's actually doing it. Well, a mutakabbir, a mutakabbir won't even do that. And Hazrat Tami rahimahullah ta'ala understood the occasion, understood where his toba was, understood what he wanted and he, what he wanted that person to achieve as well. Immediately, he retracted and he says to him, yes, it's achieved. Tell him not to do that now. Tell him not to do that now. The first time when I went to Gujarat, Hazrat Wala Ahmad Barakatuh is saying, and three people were killed in Khanpur. And uh, I started speaking, and regarding that particular place, Khanpur, uh, there is something wonderful to say uh, and to note that there's 100% Namazis. Nevertheless, I went there and I said that, listen, 100% Namazis and Salat, that's there in its place. But three people were killed. That shows that we are nowhere near any type of good akhlaq. We don't even know what is akhlaq. I said this to them. And many people also took to me at that time that this is what Hazrat is trying to tell us. That we are excelling in this year, but we have forgotten about akhlaq. On the day of Qiyamah, there will be nothing more weighty in the scales than good character. This akhlaqiyat, this is our foundation and this is what we need to correct, is that of our akhlaq. Look at a person who's studying. He excels, he studies, he goes all out, he does tuition in mathematics. But he's got nothing to do about geography. He's got nothing to do about geography. What will his condition be? He won't even know in which country am I staying. In the one he's excelled, but he's zero in the other. Let it not be such that in ibadat we excel, but in akhlaq, sifr, we are zero. Now let's make dua. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa maulaha Allahumma inna nas'aluka sihhata wal iffata wal amanata wa husna al khulk wal rida bil qadr Oh, you were not here the other day? You must this out. Let me just say it to you. Uh, I quoted this the other day. Hazrat Hassan, uh, Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala and came to the Jama Masjid in Basra. And then he's seen different people in different halkas giving their talks, waz and dars. And then he reprimanded them. He reprimanded them saying to them, who gave you people permission to have dars? You don't have that license and that permission to do so unless, unless or until you have been given the permission. Of course, that was the usul of that day and that age. I mean, he even told that to Hassan al-Basri. Yes. Hassan al-Basri was somebody who was a great scholar in Alim. I mean, we can speak so much on him alone. But the fact of the matter was that Ali radiallahu ta'ala at that time was in charge. Ali radiallahu ta'ala was the Sahabi and Hassan al-Basri was the Tabi. He called him also and he said, listen, I'll take your exam. I'll scrutinize you and interrogate you. Listen, I want to ask you a few questions. If you pass, I'll allow you. I'll retain you. You can continue what you're does. And if not so, you would also have to leave. Meaning, you're more than welcome in the masjid, but you don't have the permission to carry out your, your, your dars. He asked him the question that what is the foundation of all good? And Hassan al-Basri Answers al-wara, it is that of piety. Ali radiallahu ta'ala was delighted because he gave the correct answer and he says, What is the foundation of all evil and wrong? He says, Toma, having desires, where a person has all his desires and his hopes attached to people, and he shifted his attention from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Shah Waliullah rahimahullah ta'ala has written in Tafhimat that a person who sits down for waz, he needs to have certain salient qualities and characteristics. Not just any person can go there. Rather, he needs to have adalat in him. He needs to have adalat in him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat and keep us on the tariqah and the way and the style and the method and the teaching of our buzrugan deen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us, help us, show us, let us practice this and love this, that how do we stay with our juniors? How do we stay and treat our seniors? Leave alone etiquette. Leave alone adab and etiquette. People are not even fulfilling hukuk. 
the necessary duties of their seniors. You know, I went to one place, uh, there's nothing wrong for me in mentioning this here, and I was sitting, the four brothers are there, and then they're speaking and addressing one another, and it sounded so beautiful, and the effect of it was so tremendous, I have it in my mind, I'm relating it to you, where the younger brother is saying to the older brother, Bai Jan, Bai Jan, Bai Jan, and it sounded so well, and it was so good, it was the respect that he was giving to his elder brother, which we don't even find today, where brothers are not even talking to one another. On one occasion, on one occasion, I was with Hazrat Malan Shah Wasiullah Saab, and I said, Bai Saab, referring to someone else, Bai Saab. And Hazrat Malan Shah Wasiullah Saab said, no, no, not Bai Saab. You don't say that. Normally you say Baiya, and you should say Baiya. You should say Baiya, because there's more affection in that word. There's more compassion in it. It is uh, more suitable for this type of a situation. So, anyway, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبَ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ بِحُرْمَةِ سَيِّدِ النَّبِيِّ الْكَرِيمُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ